This is Geometry, Chapter 13, Section 2, in which we will be studying probability involving permutations and combinations. When we talk about permutations, what we're talking about is some arrangement of objects in which the order matters. Okay? Consider, for example, the letters in your name. They're in a particular order. That's a permutation of those letters. If we switch the order of the letters, it wouldn't spell your name anymore. Unless you have double letters in your name and you switch those two, but, you know, let's not cut hairs quite yet here. Finding the number of permutations involved in a uh, problem calls for us to use something called a factorial. Now, the fancy math definition of factorial is the product of all the positive integers less than or equal to the number that you're given. So 5 factorial, that's how you read this. The symbol for factorial is exclamation point. Okay. We're not overly excited about 5! You know, it's just the symbol that they chose for whatever reason. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And my calculator tells me that's 120. 8 factorial would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. The easy way to think about factorial is start at your number and count down until you get to 1 and then multiply everything together. Okay. And then to make some things work out, they had to come up with a rule for 0 factorial. 0 factorial is defined as being equal to 1. There is a button on your calculator that will help you find factorial. Every calculator is a little different, so I'll have to show you individually where you'll find that button on your calculator. So let's apply this idea. We've got a group of friends, six friends, who are going to pose for a picture. And I've got six names here. Okay. I want to know the probability that Troy is on the left and Kip is on the right. Okay. Well, remember what probability means is the number of favorable outcomes, the number of things that match what we're looking for, over the possibilities, the number of things that could happen. Okay. Let's consider what could happen first. What could happen... How many people could be in this spot? Possibly. Okay, not specific to the problem, but possibilities. Possibilities are there are six people that could be here. Okay. Now I've picked somebody. How many people can be here? It's five, four, three, two, and then there's one person left. So the possibilities are 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 factorial. Okay. Now, let's figure out the probability or the number of favorable outcomes. Kip has to stand on the right. Troy has to stand on the left. So now I've really only got four spots that I have any say over. How many people can be in this spot? Four. Three are left to stand here. Two can stand here, and one can stand there. Four times three times two times one. That's four factorial that match the situation out of six factorial possible. Okay. I'm going to show you how you can work with this without your calculator. And then I'll, you know, like I said, I'll show you with your calculator in class. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 cancels out 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What are we left with then? One chance out of 30. Okay. If you used your calculator there, you would have had... I don't know, 24 over 720, which would reduce to 1 out of 30. Okay. 
Now, in the previous situation, we were using all of the people possible. Okay, We were using all six people as part of our picture. When you're not going to use everybody, the number of permutations changes. It gets smaller. Okay. If I have n distinct objects, they're different somehow. Could be that their color is different. Could be that they're different people. Could be their size is different. Some way that you can tell them apart. I have n of these things. And I only want to pick r, some value r, of these objects to talk about. There's a formula for permutations of that. And the formula is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Now again, there's a button on your calculator that does this job for you. I'll have to show you where it is. Sometimes it's hiding in menus. Sometimes it's uh, on a, a second or a shift of a button. But I'll help you find it when we need it. So let's consider we have a class of 15 students and we're going to choose officers. And we need four officers. President, Vice President, Secretary, and Treasurer. How many different possible officer teams are there? Here, the order is important. The first person named will be the President. The second person named will be the Vice President, and so forth. Okay. So if we have 15 people available, and we need to choose four of them, that's 15 permutations of four because the order matters. And my trusty calculator tells me that's 32,760. So that's how many different arrangements of officers I could get out of those 15 kids. Now your task is to list all of those possibilities out. Have fun. Just kidding, you don't have to do that. Let's look at another problem. We have a student ID number that's made up of four digits. And the digits in the number cannot repeat. Okay, I want to know what's the probability that somebody's ID number is 4601. Okay, How many objects are available? Well, the digits are 0 through 9, so there's 10 digits available, and I'm choosing 4 of them. And the order matters. 4601 is a different ID number than 1046 or something like that. So the order matters. That makes it permutations. Trusty calculator tells me there's 5,040 number arrangements that are out there, 5,040 permutations. Out of those, one of them is number 4601. So there's one chance out of 5,040 of having that number. Okay. Now suppose we have a group of objects where some of them are identical. And remember, we had distinct objects a minute ago that things were somehow, you could tell them apart. Here you've got identical things. This is going to reduce out some of the permutations. So if we consider a word like Massachusetts, okay, there are repeated letters. You can't tell the difference between this S or this one or this one or this one. So that's going to reduce out the number of permutations we have. First, we need to know how many total objects there are. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I hope. 13 factorial is the numerator. Then we have to divide out the repetitions. There are two A's. So I have two factorial to represent those. There are four S's. So I have four factorial to represent those. And there are two t's, so I have two factorial to represent those. Anything that's repeated needs to be accounted for in the denominator. Now, a lot of you, when you use your calculators here, 
you're going to put in 13 factorial divided by, and it's going to put the slash. You're going to need parentheses when you type that into your calculator. So just be careful. You can put it in just like this. 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. And I really didn't feel like typing out what 13 factorial is because it's a fairly big number. So I just left it as 13 factorial on my screen. The product of all those things is 96, so there's oh, just under 65 million different ways I could rearrange these letters. Okay. Another kind of permutation is called the circular permutation. And as the name implies, things were arranged in a circle. Okay. If you have n objects that you're putting in a circle, then the formula is n minus 1 factorial. Okay. This only works when you don't have a fixed reference point. If you have something that's fixed, then you treat the problem like it's regular permutations. For example, if we were doing a charm bracelet and it had a clasp that had some way of unhooking it and straightening it out, that clasp is a fixed point. So you would treat it like the earlier permutations that we did. Okay. If it doesn't have a fixed point, if it doesn't have a clasp to open, then you work it like a circle. Okay, if there's something fixed, then you keep it uh, as the old style. If there's nothing fixed, no starting point, no ending point kind of thing, then you treat it as a circle. We're going to uh, suspend operations here because we're up against the clock. You need to watch part two of this video as well. So make sure you watch part two, and we will be back momentarily as soon as you load the next one.